Hello and welcome to MANA here on HBN TV, the voice of Jesus Christ. I am so excited, fired up to bring you this absolutely amazing show today to come to your homes. And I want you to know that MANA is created with you, our audience in mind. We love you and you mean a whole lot to us. We don't exist without you. You are very important to us. So we go out and we make sure that we come up with show titles and different subjects that we can cover on the show that is becoming edifying, strengthening, and educational and informative so you can live a whole life that God has created you to be. This is for you especially, and we want you to watch it. We want you to email us, tell us what you think about it, comment on it, and and, and of course, don't forget to go to social media and like us. We are very excited and fired up to bring to you today a show called Who is Jesus? And we are going to have a discussion with an amazing pastor. Before, before we get into the conversation with our guest, I want you to meet my co-host, Melissa Maddox. And let us see what she has for us. Welcome back to MANA on HPN TV, the voice of Jesus Christ. I am, as usual, excited and honored to have this beautiful lady, Miss Melissa Maddox. How are you, young lady? Doing good. Hallelujah. Praise God. So all is well with you? Yes. How about Life, you? I'm good. Life is treating you very well? Yeah. I can tell. Look at that smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what do you have for us today? Loneliness. Loneliness. It's yeah. a deep subject. Yeah, it is. Talk to me. So when I think of loneliness, mm -hmm. I think of the woman with the issue of blood. In Mark wow. 5, chapter 25 through 34, and in Luke chapter 8, verse 43 through 48. Mm -hmm. Now I know it doesn't clearly state that she experienced loneliness, but according to the Leviticus uh, chapter 15, verse 19 through 33, she would be considered ceremonially unclean. unclean yes. And she possibly lived a life of loneliness and rejection. Yes. yes. She probably, her family didn't want her. Her church, her, the synagogue doesn't accept her. Her friends probably didn't want to have anything to do with her. Can you imagine this was 12 years of constantly bleeding that doesn't mm -hmm. allow us allow her to be a part of a community she was she lived outside the community you're right okay keep on going so i <coughs> remember living in a very lonely place for a majority of my life really and even though i had uh, my parents i lived mm -hmm. with my parents i felt emptiness in my heart mm -hmm. and in my life mm -hmm. i actually had a hard time making friends making connections with uh, people mm -hmm. So, so how did you survive that, those moments, those times that you were going through loneliness? That's actually where I kind of immersed myself in books and okay. TV shows and thought that that would take away the loneliness because mm -hmm. I could connect with the people on TV shows mm -hmm. and books better than I could with actual people. Uh -huh. And I actually, um, with that, I actually um, fantasized about having conversations with people that I wanted to be my friend. Oh. So I kind of lived in like a fantasy world, and uh -huh. I, I think of um, how I would have adventures, you know, go on different, different travel different places, uh -huh. and all these different things. Uh -huh. So I lived in like a like a fantasy world. So did that replace the loneliness? Did it help actually? You? It made it worse. It made it worse, it made it worse because mm -hmm. yeah, it, it made it worse. It made it worse. Okay. So that's that's good enough. So what helped you get out of loneliness? Because somebody's out there is watching the show and they want to know how did you get out of it? I actually still experience uh, moments of loneliness, uh -huh. but I received deliverance mm -hmm. and um, then I rededicated my life back to Jesus mm -hmm. and I get into the word and I, I pray mm -hmm. and actually I, I moved down here to Long Beach mm -hmm. and the Lord actually opened the door for me to meet new people, and mm -hmm. I didn't have friends in the place where I lived, mm -hmm. so the Lord actually opened the door for me to, to make godly friendships, uh -huh. and they're actually help, I help them, and they help me, mm -hmm. so and, and at moments, they experience loneliness as well, so mm -hmm. we're there to help each other, and actually, that's what I'm reminded of um, Psalms 68, verse 6. Uh-huh. Um, actually I actually don't have my Bible with me right now, which is not good, but... Um, <laughs> Can you summarize it? Can you... It, I think it mentioned something about, you know, two people is better than one. You know, yes. we are here to encourage each other. Yes. So that made me actually think of friendship, you know, mm -hmm. how 
you know, God places people that are lonely yes. into families yes. or yes. friendships yes. And, and also uh, eventually into marriage. Yes, yes. So. Ha hallelujah. That's a good thing. I, I, I agree. <laughs> so, yeah, lon loneliness could be painful. I think all of us go through it every now and then. I, I do every now and then as well. But when I feel lonely, I don't give it a second to stay with me or to stay in me. I will probably go through it for a second or mm -hmm. so, but I always just go right back within me and say, Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. You are in me and you are with me. You are the living water that flows in me. And I turn that loneliness into worship. I yeah. don't have to get up and say hallelujah loud, but I, my mouth is closed. I could be feeling lonely while I'm driving. I could be feeling lonely at work. I could be feeling lonely at home or even sitting with a company of people. Loneliness yeah. is very deceiving. You're sitting with a company of people and all of a sudden you feel loneliness. And when you feel loneliness... You don't want to disrupt everything that's going on. You just go within yourself and just love on Jesus and, and know that you really are not lonely because he says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's a promise you can hold on to. He's always with you. So I really appreciate that. That was good. Thank you very much for joining us every week. Thank you. We'll be right back after this message. You're watching the Hosada Broadcasting Network. You know, I am um, in my walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, even before my walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, I've been exposed to so many people who have a hard time to believe that Jesus Christ is God. They can believe that He's Savior, He's Lord, He's everything like New Age and all, and all the other religion. Even Christianity, they can believe that Jesus ev is everything but God. But the Bible tells us in John 10, 30, Jesus himself says, I and the Father are one, bringing himself to a position where he is God. And then if you look at Matthew 14, 16, it says, when the high priest asked Jesus if he was the Christ, Jesus answered, yes, I am the Christ. So that tells us, and there are many other scriptures that shows us that Jesus is God. And today in studio, we have the most beautiful lady, my sister, Dr. Ruby Carroll, Pastor Ruby, who has been hanging out with HPN for so many years. She broadcasts on HPN. She has her own ministry called God's Faithful Disciples in Prayer Clinic. And she will talk about it a little bit about that. And she, is, she carries two doctorates. This is a powerful woman in theology. And here she is to discuss with me who Jesus is. Pastor Ruby, it is such an honor and a pleasure to have you always in our lives. You've been a blessing to Hosanna Broadcasting Network. And especially to me, you're, you're my friend, you're my sister. I can call on you for prayer. We can hang out together. So I really enjoyed you all these years and I will continue to enjoy you till Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Praise God, right? Praise God. <laughs> Welcome. And I'm, I'm very happy to have you. So let's, let's get into this discussion. People are having, I don't know if I want to say it, having a hard time believing who Jesus is. When you and I know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is God, the creator of the whole universe. Mm -hmm. So who is Jesus to you? Can you talk about it? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to be a part of your, one of your guests. And I thank you for trusting the God inside of me Amen. should be able to answer certain questions. And I'm going to do the best that I can Amen. by the spirit of the God, the Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. So today, Amen. first of all, I have to take you to this one particular scripture before we even, before I even answer. Okay. According to second, first Thessalonians chapter five mm -hmm. and verse 13, it says, for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcome it not as the word of man, but as it is the truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So to answer your question, first of all, in these 66 books, uh -huh. if you take this as just a dead letter, 
Uh -huh. If you don't believe that this is the word of God and that yes. it was inspired, because some people might say, well, man wrote the Bible, but it was breathed upon by the Holy Spirit. It yes. was, these men were directed and guided by the Holy Spirit. So before you even get any further, you first have to admit, accept, and recognize that this is the word of God. Yes. Now, the moment you make that choice, yes. and we're going to use that, that word a lot in this segment, yes. the moment you make a choice to believe the word of God, then you really don't have all the problems believing who Jesus is. Amen. Now, as far as I'm concerned, but from, from the time I was four years old, I knew that Jesus is God. It's God. I knew that mm -hmm. from, from day one, yeah. but again, and because I was taught that at a very early age, I grab a hold of it. And, um, many times we, we, as, as we grow and mm -hmm. as we begin to walk in the, in the ways of God, we have a tendency to detour. But again, Hebrews 11 and six says, you first have to believe that God is before you can even come to him. That's right. So if you don't believe that this is the word of God and that it was inspired by the Holy Spirit, then it's, you're going to have a difficult time believing who Jesus, who Jesus is. So, Pastor Ruby, let me ask you a question. Talk about the pre-existence of Jesus Christ. Take yeah. us to the beginning. Amen. Praise be to God. Teach us because I, I want to learn more. Praise God. I know what I believe, but it's good to always know well, and have a backing. According a backing. to... The Bible, mm -hmm. according to the Bible, every book in the Bible uh -huh. tells you who Jesus is. Now, if you're a person that only likes to read the New Testament, you're not going to really get a revelation of who Jesus is. Because yes. from Genesis, when the Bible says that, God, that uh, listen, listen to this. This is I powerful. see that Bible has been used really yes. well. <laughs> yes. The Bible tells us uh -huh. that Jesus, well, it didn't say Jesus uh -huh. because his name was not Jesus at yes. the time. Yes. yes. But the Lord walked with Adam and Eve. Yeah. Well, not didn't say Adam, Eve either. It said Adam. Adam. The, the Lord walked with him in the garden. Yes. So we do understand that the Bible says that God is spirit, right? The God, the father is spirit, yes. but God, the son is the person that we are talking about today. Yes. yes. So what yes. happened was mm -hmm. in the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. that was the person that was, we're going to say Jesus, even though that's not, was his name. His name was not pronounced until the new Testament. Uh -huh. So then when you go to the book of Exodus, you saw him portrayed as the, the Passover lamb. Yes. And then when you go to Leviticus, yeah. He was the one that was put aside. Let's see. Levit Leviticus tells us that he was the sacrifice. The second, yes. it tells you that. Yes. Then when you go to the book of Numbers, he was the brazen, you know, yeah. when, when the, the snakes the, the was serpent. biting them, yes. it was yes. a brazen serpent. Yes. And then you go to Deuteronomy, Moses says they're going to, God is going to raise up one like me. Yes. And we know that yes. because... Um, Jesus told them that in the New Testament, he said, Moses spoke about me. Yes. And then when you go to, uh -huh, to Joshua, mm -hmm. in Joshua chapter four, uh, I believe mm -hmm. it's, uh, it says, um, it tells you that he, mm -hmm. the preexistent Christ mm -hmm. was the one that came when Joshua was by the river before they crossed the Jordan river. Right. It says, he says, so he, he was the one, Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13 through through 15, it talked about him was, he was the commander of the army of the yes. Lord. Hallelujah. He, that was the theophany of Christ. Hallelujah. That was, that was God in the flesh that Joshua saw. Yes. Okay. Yes. So then we can go on and on and on and we can talk about judges. He was the one, he was the angel that came to Gideon. Yes. He was the one in, and that came to, to Manoah. Watch, yes. this is so powerful. Yes. Uh -huh. When, when uh, Manoah's wife, uh -huh. and uh, uh, he, 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 he um, appeared to her and told her she was going to have a son. Uh -huh. And when he came back, the Bible says, and this is so, this just amazes me because when they told him to put the sacrifice on the, on the rock and, uh -huh. and everything, what happened was this. It was so powerful because... They ask him, what's your name? And he says, now in the King James, it says, my name is secret. Uh -huh. In the new King James, it says, my name is wonderful. Uh -huh. 
So Isaiah told us that. Yeah, wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. Yes. So we know yes. that he was, he's the pre existence yes. God. Yes. You know, he's from, always been. Always have been. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you really want to know, if you really want to know a little bit more about who Jesus is, mm -hmm. you've got to read Proverbs chapter 8. Chapter 8. Hold your thoughts. We're going to take a commercial break and we'll be right back with this amazing discussion about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are watching Hosanna Broadcasting Network, the voice of Jesus Christ. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Hosanna Broadcasting Network is broadcast around the world. Preaching, teaching, ministering, entertaining, uplifting, compelling, and spreading the voice of Jesus Christ worldwide. HBN TV, the voice of Jesus Christ worldwide. Broadcasting now. In a culture where most people are obsessed with watching television, one cannot help but to point out the danger that lies within. Television has the power to alter the thinking of its viewers with subliminal messages that hinder the mindset of its audience by causing negative emotions that are detrimental to the soul. TV has the ability to influence life choices and distort a person's perception from what God intended it to be. Unless the true message of our Lord Jesus Christ gets into their hearing, some will lose their souls. Let's give them an alternative. HBN is called to clarify and illuminate the true light of his word. Join us and use television to broadcast the truth that will bring healing to the nations. For more information on becoming a broadcaster, please visit HosannaBroadcasting.com. HBN TV, the voice of Jesus Christ. Welcome back on MANA. I am sitting here with my friend, my sister, an amazing woman of God, talking about Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, mighty in all his ways. So, Pastor Ruby, we left off where you were telling me that um, in Genesis, was that in Genesis or Numbers, that it says he was wonderful. Oh. His name was wonderful in, 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 Isaiah. in, in Isaiah. Isaiah. I, no, Isaiah says wonderful counselor, yes. but before that, oh, and there judges, was judges. Judges, judges. He was wonderful. Judges, His yes. name is wonderful. Yes. Okay, so yes. you connected that. That's yes. amazing. Yes. Okay, can you pick up from that? So there? what happened is yeah. because uh, after he after he went up in the fire, uh, you know, he touched uh, the one and he went up in the fire, uh, Manoah's wife said, oh my God, we have seen the face of God. Yeah. And, and, and his the husband said that, and mm -hmm. and she said, well, if he wanted to kill us, you know, he would have. So yeah. I'm saying that we got to focus. Like I said, the Old Testament of the Bible tells us about the New Testament, and the New Testament tells us about the Old Testament. Testament. So yeah. if you're a person that don't understand that we still need the Old Testament, yes. you'll never get yes. the real understanding of who Jesus, who Jesus is. And I believe that we all need to know about the person of Christ, yeah. not just the letter of the yeah. word. Yeah. We the need person. to learn yeah. to know who Jesus is. Yes. And, and, and is you know what? Subject. Not only who Jesus is, we will not be able to know who we are in Jesus Christ unless we really understand the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. There's no separation. In no. It. So, Pastor Ruby, give me some of the traits of Jesus Christ. Like, who is he? Well... He is the compassionate Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, he is so compassionate. He, he, the woman that, that was caught in adultery, yes. he, he said, uh, 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 where are your, your, where are your accusers? He yes. said, and she said, Lord, they're, they're not here. He said, well, neither do I accuse you. Go yes. and sin no more. Yes. He did not judge her for what she Forgiving did. Forgiving God. Merciful Okay, God. he's merciful. Then yes. he is a, he's the celebrated healer. Yes. He touched the leopard. Now, you've got to understand that in those days, you did not touch a leopard. You don't even come close. You don't touch them. Yes. But his compassion... Uh -huh. Caused him to touch the leopard and the leopard because the leopard said, "If you are willing, yes, 
if you are willing. Sometimes I believe that we've got to pray like that. God, if you are willing, you can do so and so. If you are willing, because he wants to do it, but we got to come to him in that way. And so the only way we can come to him in that manner, though, is we got to know who he is. Yes. And then he's the one that walked in water. Yes. He's the water walker. Yes. Wonderful, I mean, hey, miraculous. Yes. The, the, the amount of miracles. Then yes. he gives us salvation. Yes. Watch this. All we have to do is believe yes. that he yes, is the son of God yes. and that he is God, the second person. All we got to believe that he died and rose from the dead yes. and that he went back to sit at the right hand of his father. We just got to believe this. And so that's why I started out with the, the first Thessalonians yeah. 2 and 13, that we got to accept this word as the word of God yes. and not just the word. In of its man. entirety. In yes. its entirety. Yes. So, Pastor Ruby, all mm -hmm. the things that you're saying mm -hmm. about Jesus, people mm -hmm. know and they will say it. He's compassionate. He's merciful. He's love. He's, he's mighty. He, everything that you're saying and mm -hmm. I'm saying, they're saying, however, there's this disconnect. They are having a hard time mm -hmm. believing that he's God, his creator. Mm -hmm. Why is that? That has, that has, it's a twofold question and okay. it's, it's got a lot of answers. For okay. instance, let's hear it. There's those of us <laughs> uh -huh. that, that I was, I was brought up as a Catholic. Uh -huh. So I knew from, I was four years old that Jesus is God. That's uh -huh. one good thing that they preach. Yeah. However, there are those, I spoke to a young man just, just a couple of days ago and he said he never heard about Jesus. So it just depends on. How much exposure you have had. Yeah. How, but I, I, this, is, this would be my, my main answer to that is uh -huh. this. The reason why so many people don't believe who Jesus is, they accept him as Savior. You have mm -hmm. so many denominations right now. They accept him as Savior. I want you to save me, but you cannot be my Lord. Or I want you to provide for me. I want you to provide for me. But you really are not God. I want you to heal me, but... But you are not God. You know, and so, you, yeah. begin. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2 says, mm -hmm. look what this, this, this is a powerful scripture. While you're looking at it, I want to just tell you this. Mm -hmm. I used to be new, in New Age. Okay. I used to be one of those people that didn't believe God was, Jesus was God. Mm -hmm. I believe he was the Messiah. Yes. He was the prophet. He had in, reincarnated so many times that he had attained perfection. He mm -hmm. was so perfect, mm -hmm. then he died on the cross for my sin. So he's my Lord, he's my Savior. So when I say that, I fit in the mold. I mean, I, I can, I'm talking the, the Christian language. So I'm, I'm a Christian, you know, that's all that's required of me. But deep inside of me, I never believed it was Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and then, like you, I came from a Coptic Orthodox background. But when Same I was, grew up as a child, mm -hmm. I knew he was God. So, but when I he came got, here drifted. and I became new age, I said, mm -mm, that's old religion. Mm -hmm. I put it on mm -hmm. the side mm -hmm. and I believed this new age, you know, progressive, mm -hmm. fancy, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's about meditation. It's about levitating out of your body. So it, it was exciting to me and it was easy to leave the, the other, you know, on the side, the truth on the side. Yeah. That's what a lot of people do. Yeah. But I look at this particular scripture mm -hmm. and it says, now, we're talking about the people in the Old Testament here. It says, okay. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2 says, For indeed, the gospel was preached to us mm -hmm. as well as to them. Mm -hmm. But the word which they heard did not profit them, mm -hmm. not being mixed with faith mm -hmm. in those who heard it. Mm -hmm. So what happened? You can hear the word. Mm -hmm. You can be preached to over and over and over again. You can read this Bible from now until Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. Unless you choose mm -hmm. to believe mm -hmm. again that this is the word of God. What am I saying? Going back to the book of John, mm -hmm. many people read this. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So, Pastor Ruby, hold your thought. This is such a... A beautiful discussion. And unfortunately, we are running out of time. Okay. But I'd like for you to come back. Come back next week. Let's okay. pick it up where we left off. Okay. John chapter 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. 
the word was God. Did you know that some religion takes the last part, the word was God, and they say the word was a God, disqualifying Jesus yes. from being God. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up, Pastor Ruby. I really enjoyed you. Thank you very much for coming. So I'll Amen. see you next week and we'll continue this Amen. discussion. So we believe here at HBN TV, we are the voice of Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty who created the whole universe and there's none, nobody like him. So with that said, I thank God for you for watching HBN TV. Thank you for watching MANA. And I am excited that today you learned something, you got something from this conversation and that will help you grow in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you and God bless you. How important is it for a Christian and a non-Christian, mm -hmm. a human being created by the image of God, mm -hmm. in the image of God, mm -hmm. to believe that Jesus is God? How, how important is that? Because we can say a lot with our lips. Yeah. He said they honor me with their lips, but their heart is yes. far away. information, please log on to www.hosannabroadcasting.com. We're also on Facebook, or you can follow us on Twitter.